Hey everyone, welcome back to part four of topic four in our database class. And in this video, I'm going to discuss how we can depict entities in entity relationship diagrams. All right, so let's talk next about the various ways in which we can depict an entity in an entity relationship diagram. And essentially what we're looking at here are three variations of a graphical depiction of an entity. In this case, the entity's name is item. And as we progress from left to right, we are conveying more and more information about the actual structure or design of that entity class. So when we are at the initial stages of design, it is very, very common to just use a simple rectangle, as we see here, with the name of the entity class inside of it as a basis for representing that concept in the design. Okay, so it's very common to just start out with, okay, I'm going to have employees, I'm going to have departments, and I'm going to have customers and products and so on. And you just represent each of these as a simple rectangle with its associated name. And once we feel like we have a complete set of those, then we can move on to the next stage, which might be, we just show key attributes. And this is really useful because we're not including the non-key attributes yet, but we're adding the keys so that we can ensure that every table has a primary key so we can guarantee uniqueness and that we have established all of the necessary foreign keys to allow for the connections between our tables. So uh, something that you might find then at this level of design is it's like a medium level of detail. Let me just uh, throw up a blank screen here really fast and we'll draw some of these. So we might have something I don't know, like this. Just draw some tables out here as we try to figure out how some things are related to each other. All right. So I don't know, maybe I have four tables and here they are. And then I just start filling in some information. So maybe this top one is my employee table. And again, I'm just representing these entity classes as rectangles. And I'm replicating here our little employee database that we use so frequently. And this one will just be a skill table. So we know then that we're going to have to connect these various tables together in some way. And to do that, we're going to need primary key, foreign key connections. So I might start over here and say, all right, I got to have my primary keys. So maybe I call that, I don't know, department ID. And every table has to have a primary key. So we do that down here for the skill table as well. And I'm using the letters PK, which is very common in entity relationship modeling to the concept of a primary key, right? And up here we have maybe employee ID. And then we get to a little more of a complicated task where we've got to deal with some foreign keys. So we know that department eventually needs to be connected to employee. So we could put in a foreign key over here to handle that ID. And finally, we've got to deal with a composite key down here where we simultaneously have attributes that serve as a primary key and a foreign key. And we mark those with both PK and FK to indicate their dual role. Okay, so at this level of database design, we may end up with something that just looks like this. It's just the key attributes and the names of the entity classes, okay? but we have enough information here to see how these, all these various entity classes are going to be related to each other. Okay? So we have a primary key in every one of them to guarantee uniqueness as necessary. And we have all of our primary key, foreign key connections established that ultimately would allow us to interconnect these tables or the, at least the rows in the tables, right? So we have this, yeah, let me get a different color. We have this one here that connects these ones, right? Employee ID connects up here. Skill ID connects over here. 
So all of our connections are in place. We're just slowly adding more and more detail to our design. So returning to our slide, that's a middle level of design detail that's depicted here on this design or on this screen. So eventually what we're going to do is we'll get to a design that looks something like the one over here on the right. And in this case, we have the rectangle that represents the class, the entity class, right? We've got its name at the top. We have a primary key, all keys marked. This one doesn't have any foreign keys. So this is the list of keys. And then we have all of the non-key attributes in here as well. Now, at this point, I feel like I can start to share a little more information about some of the tools and tricks that we have at our disposal for conveying information in our designs. You will, for example, notice that this attribute here, which is a primary key, appears in bold type. Well, these ones down here do not. So this is a graphical or visual way of conveying the null status for each of these attributes. So it's not just the name of the attribute, but if it appears in bold face, we know that null values are not allowed. That is, it is a required attribute. We must provide a value for that attribute. If it is in just regular typeface, not bold, as we see here, that means that it is an optional attribute or put differently, that null values are allowed. So visually, when we look at this item entity based on this current design, what this says is we have an entity named item. It uh, has a primary key named item ID and being a primary key, it is naturally a required attribute, right? Null values are never allowed for primary keys because you could have two rows with a null value and then it's not unique, right? So primary key requires uniqueness. Null values are never allowed. That's why this is bold. But we also see that according to this current design, these four attributes here, description, cost, list price, and quantity on hand are all optional. So we could just store a bunch of null values in there if we wanted to. Naturally, that's probably not what we would use for a final design. <laughs> but uh, for now, I want to convey this idea of required versus optional attribute values as indicated by bold or non-bold type. So this is one of those things that I was mentioning at the beginning of our time together in this topic that we'll learn lots of ways of conveying very specific or nuanced information as we work our way through entity relationship modeling. And this is one of those things, like you can convey whether or not an attribute allows null values by using boldface type or not. And that's something that you did not see in our more primitive or simpler types of database diagrams, like the ones that you've generated inside SQL Server Management Studio, for example. There's no way to tell by looking at those if a non-key attribute is required or not.